Should talk about black. This is my second time trying to do, doing this video. Uh, they snatched my other video. I, it's it's something in this video they don't want me to see. They don't want you to see either. That's why I like taking video when I go outside because you can always come back and look at it. You know, and your video, your camera, it sees things that you do not see. So here is another dog in the. It is a pink man. You see? It is a pink man. He has this down over his head and shades on. He's not homeless. He is an actor. He is a per. There's another actor that will come too. Now, when I left out of the building, you know, after they tried to kill me with some pheromone type shit, um, when I leave out the door, to step onto the sidewalk, there are three wheelchairs and two walkers just systematically or strategically walk past me as I open the door to walk to the street. So I say to my son, I say, I guess they were so busy with the walkers and the, um, with the walkers and the wheelchairs that they didn't have time to simulate the dogs. So as we walk down the street, all of a sudden there's a pink tick. She has a little dog. Okay. I see her coming. I said, oh, <laughs> I guess um, the dog, they simulate the dog, but the dog will come later. And it did. And so after her, it's this, they're building a building there that's Shriners. You know, that they are also building it for St. Vincent de Paul. You know, St. Vincent de Paul is starting to build a lot of uh, buildings for homeless people so that they can target us even more. And that's all they're doing. So they can target and track us even more. So they're building and then they put this thing over the sidewalk. It's like a tunnel, you know, but it is to keep the pedestrians safe. You know, if any, so nothing will fall on them from the building. So I'm getting ready to go under this tunnel, you know, to walk on that part of the sidewalk. And all of a sudden appeared out of nowhere, this pink dude with a, a br big brown dog. The dog was bigger than this. A big brown dog. So since I was did not prepare to see that dog. I mean the way it just came like. Like he just appeared. Like magic. You know with the dog. And so I just stepped out the curb. And I walked in the street. My son stepped out with me. And he said oh so you're going to. Try to bypass the dog, but you're going to walk in front of a bus. I saw the bus coming before I stepped out the damn curb. And I walked in the bike lane. No cars or buses go in the bike lane. So, you know, my son, he was so, so gun ho about me getting hit by a bus. You know, that was just his handler. So, um... I tell my son, no, I had to walk in the street because I was not prepared for that. That dog came, that dog and that man came from out of nowhere. And I told my son um, that uh, I, you know, I, I can have anxiety attacks, you know. I told my son, it, it was, it, plus the way that the sidewalk is, is it's already slim. And then they built like a covering over it to protect the pedestrians from the builders. And it was not big enough for my walker, the man, and his dog. And in my mind, I could see myself picking up my walker and just beating the shit out the dog. So I just decided, let me just step up the curb. And I did. Um, and as we... Uh, when we came here, I sat down. When we came here, I sat down. Yeah, when we got to the corner, I told my son I had to sit down. 
I said I have to um, put my thoughts together because, you know, it seemed like everything just happened so fast, you know? Seeing the doll, stepping out the curb, my son and my ill about the fucking bus, you know? So I sat down, and uh, while I sat there, my son, he had left his phone. <laughs> so he went back to get his phone, and I turned on the camera. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, another perp here. But before I do, when I got down to when my son came back, I began to walk again and get to the trolley. There were two females, two pink females, coming toward me and my son. Me and my son, we are in the uh, walkway of the streets, you know, in the intersection. And uh, my son's in front, so I just um, put my walker, position my walker behind my son, and I walk behind him. All of a sudden, he just stops. In the fucking intersection. And I just looked at him. I didn't say a word. I just looked at him. And he just stood still. But at the same time my son stopped. The two pink females. With the two brown, big brown dogs. Exactly like the dog that just walked past me. Um, They stopped at the same moment my son stopped. And I just looked at my son. It took my son seconds to get himself together. As though he was in a daze. And I told him, are you going to move or what? And he was like, well, why are you doing that? Just walk. So my son, he's on his skateboard, but he's skating slow. So he gets, you know, begins to skate slow again. As my son is going to go to the curb to get on the sidewalk, you know, because the females, they had stopped right there. They stay stopped. But when I get ready to get on the curb to go to the up on the sidewalk, those two females begin to walk right past me. And that is when my son began to see what I was talking about. Now, as this video goes, you're going to see someone come from somewhere over here. But um, you don't see them here. But there's going to be a car to come and block. After the car comes in turn, you're going to see this bitch. And I didn't see it until I began to watch the video. See, that's what happened. I think they tried to kill me before I came out the door because I'm going to see the prophet this is him right there right there oh yeah I'm, I went to see the prophet he's doing okay he's kind of like nonchalant about things but uh, he uses his mind he knows how to have the staff work for him instead of him work for the staff he also told me a word transition. They put him in transition for like 30 minutes. That is to go in his room. He has nothing in his room but pencil and paper that he can write. Um, but transition to me is not transition. It is lockdown. He said sometime, you know, during the day, uh, they send everyone to their room for transition. Um for 30 minutes he said that's locked down then he said oh you know if you don't do what they say they call you being bad so you have a um 10 minutes transition which you're locked down for 10 minutes just keep watching this little bitch here yeah. and the prophet does not know anything about prophet noble drew i mean i was teaching it to him but then they had him to leave away from me so i have not seen him in maybe two years and um so he um i asked him about uh hiring a biff because that's who i began to teach him about he said he did not remember. And then I said, the skull with the upper arms. Do you remember that? And he was like, oh, yes, yes, yes. But I didn't want to talk to him much about that in there because they monitor you. And they're secretly monitoring you. Although you can see that pink fat bitch sitting there. And I see her eyes, you know, put her eyes on us, you know, every now and then, you know. But they also have cameras. 
and they have um, microphones because they need to know what the parents are saying to the children. They need to know what's going on at all times. So after he said yes, he remembered um, how my bear do to me, saying the skull with the upper arms as the bones. Uh, I just decided just to begin to, just to ask some questions about things he does there. But keep watching this one. My son went in the restroom. He's wearing shorts today. You know, he's a skateboarder. I'm going to turn it off. I already spoke on that. Just keep watching him. The actors. They're perps if you ask me. But they are actors. What I'm going to do is move it up because now there he is right there and see sometimes they do send someone around me with a empty wheelchair that means the wheelchair is waiting on me and here um, you can't even see his face right here but he has on heels this is a police officer this is a police officer and he is dressed up when you are homeless a homeless man does not have time to be so flamboyant with heels on but see he could not take off his shirt and whatever this is and his pants also this is a black motherfucking police officer And that's why he kept his face also covered. You see how he is dressed with heels on? A real brother that's homeless, whether he is gay or not, he does not have time to walk around in heels. This is a police officer. He even looked like he kept some of his shit on. I know he kept his pants on. But this is a police officer. Oh yeah, he did have dreads. Now this pink bastard. As you, let me see if I can go backwards when the bitch first came. As you watch the videos, keep an eye on his ass. There he is. And he's going forward. You see the back of his shirt? He's part of them. Now he goes backwards because this bitch is the one with the camera. He has the camera. So he's going to turn around so the camera can show what the fuck I'm doing. I'm going to give me a camera like what he has. No one can see his camera. But there's always a cameraman around you. Now he goes backwards. And he drags his foot. As though it does not work. But many of them. Are just actors. Street theater motherfucking actors. As I said you know. If you pay attention to that guy. In the videos you will see him there where I am sitting at waiting on the trolley now when we get on the trolley I don't get on the trolley they get on I get on another trolley you know when we get off the trolley to get on the bus um oh yeah there was one that she she I didn't get her I don't think but maybe she might be in here let me see this one she walked past me as, as, as I came out of the building and now she's walking past again with the walker because they want to kind of like mimic you or whatever the fuck they do with this stupid kind of shit I don't know my brain cells really not that wicked but I noticed that see now she's on a walker 
But before she she was in a wheelchair and she'll be in a wheelchair again. I just did not get the video because when I go outside, they hurry up and snatch my energy on my phone. And I was going to go to my grandbaby's graduation party and want to take pictures and video there. So I didn't get the part when I got off the trolley. Um, the pink dude in the wheelchair, although he was in another car. I did not know he got off the trolley. I didn't look behind me. He allowed me to know he got off the trolley because he came in front of me in his wheelchair so that I can see him. See, once you are no longer a practice target, they want you to see what they are doing because even though you tell people no one will give a fuck, they told me that. Tell whoever you want to tell, no one will care. It's the only time the bitches told me the truth. No one would care. So I noticed on the back of her shirt, it said gay. You won't see it here. But I noticed on the back of her shirt, it said gay. I really tried to, when I'm out, I tried to keep my camera down because I don't want um, to implicate the innocent, you know? So I keep the camera down. Now I went to, uh, when I got off, we had to catch another bus. Funny, the bus was 2.35, the number of the bus. And uh, the one you saw walk with the brown shirt on, she just walked. She came there back again in the wheelchair. And I knew that she was there, and I said, okay, so that means that uh, she, I saw gay, but it was spelled G-A-Y-E, you know. And my mind said, there's going to be someone gay to come around to or they're just trying to say I'm gay, you know, because there were codes written, you know, that said I was gay. And that's a long time ago. Those codes, if I still have them, they'll be all the way in the back of the storage room. So she came, but she was in a walker. The girl came that was talking to my son and um all of a sudden, you know, I smelt that smell. I smelt in here and I began to cough. I was doing a video that's a sec in the second video. Uh, the guy, you know, the, the pink guy that was in the wheelchair, he, he came around that way. And uh, none of them got on the bus with me. But you know what I did notice? I noticed that it crossed the street from me. There were people in colors, you know, because they keep the color out of my world now. But they had on colors, even sweaters with different colors in it. And I noticed everyone across the street had on really bright colors, you know, like they used to do in California, San Diego. But all those around me were all dressed in dark colors. And... As I kept thinking about it, then all of a sudden, a pink dude, he came and stood in front of me, and he had on light blue jeans and a light blue, like, plaited shirt to take away all the drab colors that I was thinking about in my mind. So now when I get on the bus, I'm still thinking there's going to be someone gay to come around me. And so uh, a couple of stops down, there was a Samoan that got on the bus, you know, Samoans are fat, they have like the men, they have like little tips, some of them, a lot of them. And uh, they do wear their hair up in a ponytail, you know, and they can somewhat look like a girl. Because, you know, I, I feel like that's their culture, you know, I knew some Samoans, you know, like years ago. So there was a form of the culture. But then I noticed this Samoan had his eyebrows arched. No, the Samoans I knew that was not a part of their culture for men to ask the eyebrows. So it came and it sat. It was me, then two seats. So it sat. So it sat in a seat away from me. You know, like it was. It sat here, empty seat, and then me. But it's still not saying, "Oh, is this guy is gay?" Okay, so when we, we get off the bus now, it, there was a pink chick. A like petite pink tick in a pretty colored dress, um, like sea green. So she allowed others to get off, but when I stood up and I have a walker, 
when I stood up to get off the bus, she hemmed up and, 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 and walked in front of me. And she just stopped right there at the bus driver to ask him a question. And I just took my walker and kept going and rolled over the back of her heels. Fuck you. You're nothing but a fucking perp. So now she gets off the, the bus. I get off, whatever, whatever. We're waiting for the light to turn. When the light turns, I walk slow. So the guy that sat here and I sat here, he gets off too. So as we're going across the intersection, I see her. She's talking to the guy and she's steady pushing on her phone. So as I get up on the curb, she leaves the guy and she walks right in front of me again. She's still on her phone. See what they were trying to do? They was trying to start some shit so I would not be able to see Yakel. So now we're waiting to cross the street to go this way. And uh, now she crosses with the guy that I'm thinking may be the gay one. But I walked slow. And I wasn't trying to keep, you know, I didn't, I wanted them to leave, get away from me. So now me and my son, we go into the child prison, because that's what it is. If you go in there, you will see it's nothing but a prison. And uh, we sign it, sign in and all this kind of stuff. So I sit down to wait for my visit, because we're like maybe five, ten minutes early. So I'm waiting for my visit, and guess who comes out that fucking door? That motherfucking gay bastard that sat there, and now I know he's gay. Because now he comes out the door and he's loud as fuck and there are three girls sitting there and they all have on black too but I think they work there so I'm thinking maybe that's their work outfits to have on black but he doesn't have on black so he walks his gay ass and he stops and he talks to them and that's how I knew he was gay and I knew they was going to send a gay motherfucker here Roman. what they wanted me to do was to be so frustrated that when I saw Yakel the visit would be horrible but as I say they don't know me I'm frustrated, I'm angry, and I hate you bastards. I don't bring that on others. When my grandbaby saw me, my grandbaby saw no hate. He saw no frustration. He saw no irritation. All he saw was granny. He did not see anything else. So now, you know, they all have to watch and this and that. Wow, my grandbaby said they have him to watch the Animal Channel, and all they do is watch TV. So what they're doing is programming them. To me, it is a a child prison, but it is also a child mental institution. That's what it is. When he said watch an Animal Planet, I say, well, that's a good thing. You can learn something. Then my son said, no, Animal Planet is not like it was when we grew up, Ima. Animal Planet, you can get like canine dogs, you know, for police and, and people who love animals. I say, oh, okay, I see. So now they want the children to love animals and care for animals more than they care for their own family. Because that's the way people are today. They care more for an animal than they do a child. So after the visit was over, me and my son, we began to walk out. Everything was fine. The sun shined so pretty. The day was so nice. Everything was fine. No one bothered me again. Not at all. Until I went to my daughter's house and then pink bastards came out. So I told my daughter when she called today, I said, I'm not coming that way anymore. You have to move for me to come to your house again. I'm not coming there anymore. Because... If someone came here and said, oh, you know, your neighbor is making me feel uncomfortable, then I would have to go and talk to my neighbor, you know, on a cords road type thing. If I couldn't get anything done with my neighbor and my visitors came again and, and they made my visitors feel uncomfortable again, then now I have to go to the manager. Someone's going to fix that shit. You're not going to make my visitors feel so uncomfortable that they're not going to come back. However, my daughter doesn't say anything to them. I don't know why she just does it. So I'm going to say now this is 24 minutes in, possibly 25 when I get too fucking talky. So I'm going to say, uh, she talk a lot here. If I think of, I want to say any damn thing else, I shall return. She talk a lot here.